Oh, that's a satisfying feeling in a Souls game. Hello, my fellow Tarnished, and welcome back to Elden Ring. I trust you're settling in well, having a swell time with stories to tell. But if there's one thing that makes, well, this entire experience much more comfortable, is having more flash to use and to have them be more potent. Yes, the flask upgrade system is fairly easy to get a grasp of, it's find two items and then use a, a grace to upgrade, but of course the key there is find the two items. So today I want to go over the two items you're looking for and where every single one of both the golden seeds and the sacred tears are in the Limgrave area, so you can essentially leave the, let's call it the starter zone with a massively powerful flask that will give you by far and away the best chance as you progress through the first major bosses of the game and into the next areas beyond, as you really, trust me, will need it. So firstly, let's talk Sacred Tears. These are cried by statues, I think? Hello! And, uh, well, they taste great, mixed with healing juices. Generally speaking, you will find these at every single church around the map. They are ruin-like buildings with the statues in, and at the foot of them is a sacred tear. So, to go through them all, we start with the third church of America over on the east of Limgrave. And this one is as easy as run up and grab it. A lot of these will have grace sites too. This one also gets your wondrous physic flask, which is a whole other system, but it's very important that you do get it. Then after that, you'll want the Kalu Baptismal Church. This is located next to a village filled with a lot of nasty enemies, but also a lot of goodies to grab. You gotta clear out the infestation in uh, the uh, church itself, and then grab yourself the sacred tear. Damn rats. Then we have the Church of Pilgrimage. This is the northmost point of the south part of Limgrave. And this one is a grey site and a sacred tier to grab. There's some ghost knights around the area, but nothing too threatening. Finally then, for Limgrave, there's the fourth Church of Marica, which is all the way over on the west of the south side of Limgrave. And this one is another simple run up and grab the uh, tier. So this means you can end up with a plus four flash in Limgrave, which is going to essentially be a full heal and a full mana replenish for a long while until you really pump those stats, which is fantastically useful. So let's move on to the golden seeds then. Every two seeds, you can upgrade the amount of flasks that you can in fact use, and these ones are a little bit subtler to find, but they always are hovering around these glowing, glorious golden trees. Though that said, a couple do come from not trees, so it's a little bit hard to actually track them down unless you just kind of randomly bump into them. So first and foremost is one that's just kind of handed to you as you head towards Stormvale Castle. To continue the main story, you essentially have to ride past it, so you can grab that seed real easy-like. Then we have the Storm Hill Shack. This is again quite close to the actual castle and the main story progression. Once you ride up through the front gate, up the hill, you will essentially ride past this shack, you can get a stone sword key here, which is fantastic, it unlocks special treasure rooms and dungeons and all sorts of goodies, and indeed on the corpse in the house, you will get your next golden seed. Then we have uh, a golden seed located near the Morn Rampart site of Grace. This is on the south side of the south uh, part of Limgrave. Basically just ride along the cliff and you will just see it on your right, hop up and you can grab it. Then we have ourselves at one over by Fort Hay. Hey! No, as in H-A-I-G-H. -H. I'm not saying hello, you're, you're a building. I'm talking to a building on a map in a video game. In any case, this one's just growing in its shadow, so you can ride up and grab it quick as you like. The next one then is in Stormvale Castle itself, for one, so you get to essentially almost the last boss. Don't go through the fog wall, instead turn around, run past the giant, and you will see it growing in the courtyard. There's a very important NPC near here in a room too, so definitely explore this area. <laughs> Now, there is two more to be grabbed in Limgrave, and they are a lot more, well, challenging and deadly, let's say. Firstly, let's tackle the Siofra River Depths. 
while traveling uh, through the eastern side, you can find yourself a innocent looking little building and you go in and you will descend into underground space city cavern. It looks gorgeous, it's incredible, it's also incredibly random. In any case, explore your way through here. If you're at the start of the game, this place is going to be above your pay grade. Enemies are going to all but one-shot you and take forever to kill. But the good news is you can just essentially ignore them, run to the seed, grab it, and then leave and make a note to come back and explore here later with the extra power boost. The final seed, then, is the hardest one of all to get, and is one you may want to return to once you have got stronger from exploring in other areas. It is where you essentially first start, the Fringe Folk Hero Cave, right where everything first began. If you feed the statue to Stone Sword Keys, well, the fog will dissipate and you could enter Poison Hell. And then once you've got out of Poison Hell, you can find yourself in uh, Chariot of Nightmare territory. Oh, good. I was hoping something like this would be in Elden Ring because, you know, we didn't get enough of a fill the first time. This is essentially a puzzle of timing and alcoves and enemies as uh, you explore, trying not to get one shot because you will get one shot every time this contraption touches you. If you want a, well, kind of cheat code through here, you can get to the second alcove by first following it down from the start. Then, uh, once it passes you again, get to the third alcove. Then simply wait for it to go up the hill past you, drop down, and from then on, you can just sprint all the way to the end to get to a fog wall. You get a lot of time bought via this method, so you don't need to play Keep Away Dodgy the entire way down, which gets really messy. This fog wall down here at the bottom, then, leads you to a boss. A ridiculous boss. A powerful, ridiculous boss. The Ulcerated Tree Spirit. Essentially a wooden flesh tree slug in a cramped room, and he is massive. You'll need to pull out all of the tricks to beat him, and again, you will likely need to get a bit stronger before coming back here. When you do eventually manage to lay him low, you will be rewarded with, yep, you guessed it, a golden seed, and one of the best, if not the best, summons in the entire game. So definitely worth doing as early as you can, as it will make things a lot easier, but obviously, yeah, he is quite the hefty foe for someone still starting out. But, you know, in the essence of being 100% complete here, this is where that seed be. So essentially, you could leave Limgrave with three extra flash charges, all at plus four potency, and set yourself up really well for the rest of the game. I hope you found this useful. Going forward, essentially, just look for each of the churches. They appear on the map, and they all have the sacred tiers. The trees are a little bit more random and spread out, but you should bump into them too. Let me know if this was indeed helpful. Like if it was, subscribe for more, and please consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. Until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.